Okay, during my Fedora review, I mentioned that that operating system included a piece of software called GNOME Boxes. I never had a chance to have a look at it until today, and I figured I would also pick out a distribution to test it with, so I'm going to take a quick look at Solus. All of that begins right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, let's begin. Uh, I have already installed GNOME boxes on my computer here, and uh, I actually installed the Linux distribution uh, in this called uh, Point Linux, and, uh, you know, because I wanted to test it and make sure it works, and much to my surprise, um, this thing's performance is quite impressive. Um, normally you would have the logo and a little message here, but we've got a machine installed in it. So, uh, let me just basically give you a rundown of, uh, what you are getting with this. Basically, you just select new, and then it's going to ask you to select an ISO image or enter an URL or whatever, uh, for the, for the, you know, virtualization that you're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna select that file, go into downloads, and I'm gonna select Solus 1.2. I'm not going to install it. We're just going to take a look at it. I figured this would be a good test because this uses the Budgie desktop, which is based on GNOME 3. And as you know, GNOME 3 does not play very nicely in any virtualization environment. Now, the thing that Boxes is going to do is... Um, it's going to automatically uh, determine the amount of memory and the amount of drive space that it needs. Because when you go into customizing this, okay, these are the only two things you can mess with. You can change the memory and maybe you can uh, hit the style here and allocate more hard drive space to it if you want to. But that's it. Those are the only settings you're getting. So this is going to basically art configure your network and everything else for you. Very simple, very easy. Um, I found that quite distressing because maybe I might want to, you know, um, you know, sw swap files between, you know, my host and my guest operating system. Now, while you can uh, enable clipboard sharing and that sort of thing, uh, I don't think doing networked folders in this is possible with the software as is. Uh, as I get a chance to explore this more, I'll see if there, that option eventually does become available. Let's go ahead and press create here. All right. And once you do that, it's going to automatically, um, run the ISO image and it's going into the boot process already. Let's go ahead and put this into full screen mode. And this is where it really, really shines because uh, this thing is going to let me um, have some nice screen resolutions out of the box. Uh, one thing I noticed with Point was it gave me the ability to uh, go into my native screen resolution, which is 1366 by 768. Let's see if we can do that um, with Solus here. I haven't had a chance to look at this at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is my first time looking at the budgie desktop. Uh, I originally had somebody ask me if I could look at budgie, and I said that I would, but when I found out that it was going to install the entire GNOME catalog on my hard drive, I said, no way, it's not happening. Um, so this is a good opportunity for me to at least have my first time look at budgie here so um that's pretty cool all right our desktop has loaded um let's see if we can find uh display settings here ah here we go and uh let's see if it will let me pick my uh native screen resolution here hmm Okay, this time it's not giving me, um, but let's try 1280 by 720, uh, in the 16.9 resolution and apply that. Well, 
We'll press keep that configuration. Impressive. It actually, even though we're running a 1280 by 720, it, it, it scaled it to completely fit the window. Awesome. I like this. So now, um, I didn't have to have any special guest editions or anything like that installed with this. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, well, let's take a look at some things here. When you move the uh, mouse to the top of the screen, you have uh, some other options available to you in boxes here. Uh, there's a pancake menu here. Let's go ahead and click this. Okay, and then you can add to favorites, force, shutdown, pause, or properties. Okay, and then in here, you have... Um, some stuff in here. The display protocol is Spice. The shared clipboard is on, so maybe we can copy and paste from host to guest here uh, right out of the box. That's pretty good. Uh, something else that I read here. Now, uh, Boxes is actually using QMU as, uh, as it's... Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? As the hypervisor. Okay, and it's using the KVM kernel modules as well. I'm really not certain how all of this works, but if what my information that I read is true, basically VirtualBox being a uh, Type 2 hypervisor and this being a Type 1. So there's notably better performance with that. And thus far, that is true. I am seeing great performance with this but at the expense of not having a lot of um, customization options, such as being able to set up networked folders and that sort of thing. Okay, but this is looking very good. So you can see we have the settings, and you can see I have USB devices that are plugged in here, and it's given me the option to turn those on to make them available to the guest operating system. Let's go ahead and close this. And we are back into our uh, virtual machine. So I'm, I'm very pleased with this so far. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, click on something here. All right, here we go. Um, looks like uh, we've got our uh, some applets here. And it looks like notifications go here too. Okay. All right, and your settings. Lock the screen or power. And then there's a gear here. What is this for? Ooh, this is cool. All right, so from here, you can um, adjust your themes in Budgie. Okay, for the background, it looks like uh, you can choose whether to have desktop icons or not. And you can define your fonts here. How about the panel here? Okay. Okay, you can manage your panels, maybe uh, alter its size. Ah, now, see, uh, I think the GNOME developers could learn from these guys right here. Maybe they, you know, GNOME should do something like this. That would be kind of cool, hey? All right, and it looks here, okay, we've got... um. Ooh, so you can add and remove applets to this as well. Ah, that's sweet. Okay. Nice. Okay, and this is the uh, hierarchy for um, everything here. You got your budgie menu, then there's a spacer, and then uh, an icon task list, spacer, your system tray notifications. Cool. All right. Not too shabby. Um, yeah. Not sure if I'm feeling this menu here, though, but hey, it looks like it works to me. Um, can we right click on the panel and do something with that? No. Looks like, so it looks like if we want to make any changes, we need to access that side menu by pressing the power button and then uh, pressing the gear here, and then you can get in there. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Okay. 
All right, well, I'm liking this. This looks cool. Not quite as intuitive as the Cinnamon desktop or as feature-rich as far as I can visually see. But hey, this is a pretty nice attempt at making a GNOME shell usable. The main intent behind even doing this in the first place uh, is actually just testing boxes. And we're just looking at this in live mode. Uh, you have a keyboard icon here, so you can insert Control-Alt-Backspace. Uh, for some Linux desktops, that's the same thing as zapping. It basically kills the X session and starts over. You can get into a TTY with Control-Alt-F1, F2, and then uh, Control-Alt-F7 usually brings you back to your desktop. Uh, and that sort of thing. And while the system is running here, you know, you can click the back arrow. And this takes you right into um, what you got, uh, you, you know, your um, all local, and then your remote machines that you have access to. And then you can just go right back into uh, your running operating system, and voila, Venusville. Um, I'm impressed with this. I wish it had more features. I think there is a way that you can get more features by adding another uh, item, and I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But um, it's an, it's a it's a virtual it's a virtual machine manager uh, for a QMU that you could uh, actually use with this, and I think it uh, gives you more features. So at the end of the day, I think this is a great way to test out QMU without having the know-how. You know, um, I think this is pretty cool. The performance seems to be pretty nice. I'm impressed with this. Now, uh, you're going to notice a, a, a big difference, though, when you actually have a piece of software installed in this thing. I'm just actually, uh, I'm actually looking at Solace from a, a live ISO image. Uh, so I'm surprised I don't see an icon on the desktop saying, click me to install. We don't see that here. Um, instead, I think we have to uh, actually do a search uh, install. Okay, install OS is in there. So you have, uh, you, you have to find that in the menu. And then, uh, it will open up its installer. Um, so yeah, cool deal. Um, so I'm liking how Budgie looks, uh, and, uh, uh, this is my first time ever looking at, uh, Budgie. Uh, I think it's pretty neat. Um, not something that I would use every day, mind you, but um, I had some people ask me to look at it, and so, hey, I saw, I got the t-shirt now, <laughs> we're good to go, and uh, I gotta say, I'm gonna keep GNOME boxes installed um, on my computer, and I'm gonna, you know, when I do some of my usability tests that I've been doing on ISO Watch, I'll try doing a few ISO Watch episodes with this, and uh, if it's something that I think I'm going to use on a regular basis, um, I'll probably do a forum post on it. may not necessarily um, take the time to do an entire video, but um, for those of you who follow me on cupoflinux.com, you definitely want to come over there and uh, check out some of the interesting Linux conversations we're having over there. It's a great place to hang out. It's a great place to learn Linux as well. Now, let's say we want to just shut down this virtual machine. Okay, and we're going to power this off. Because we did not actually install the operating system itself, it's going to automatically delete that virtual machine. And something else I would like to point out is if we go into our home directory and then go into dot .local, GNOME boxes and images. Basically, the installed OS that I have right now is in a file called Boxes Unknown. I'm really not sure why um, it does that. But um, apparently the software must know, um, you know what each of these images are uh, when it reads them.
Uh, I just thought that was kind of strange, but that's where uh, it stores your uh, virtual disk images and that sort of thing. So the pancake menu here lets you decide uh, how you want to uh, display these, whether you want to display them as small icons or large icons. Uh, you uh, have the search feature if you have a bunch of virtual machines. I don't think I'll ever need that. Well, that's all I have on... Um, gnome boxes and uh luckily uh solus 1.2 got to be the uh, test os in this thing uh i'm pleased i think this is a great achievement um and it's well worth my time uh exploring this piece of software further if this is something you think you would like to use um it may already be in your software repositories just uh, do a search for gnome dash boxes and uh see if it's in there install it and give it a try that's all i have for this uh, i believe my next video is probably going to be on point linux since i have it already <laughs> installed in boxes so uh until i'm ready to start shooting that peace out mm -hmm.